So let me uh, start by greeting you in the name of UNESCO. Um, since the microphones don't work, I may as well stand up. Uh, my name is John Crowley. I'm responsible for programs and social transformations in the UNESCO sector for social and human sciences. Let me also start by giving you the linguistic rules of the game. Uh, we don't have simultaneous translation. And uh, most people understand English and French, but are more comfortable speaking one of the languages. And what I propose, and maybe some people don't speak one of the languages. What I propose is that we function informally, everyone using the language they prefer. And I'll say this again in French in a moment. Um, and if ne absolutely necessary to translate, uh, I will do so, or one of my colleagues will do so. Donc nous n'avons pas de, euh, je vous, je vous euh, euh, accueille au nom de l'UNESCO, euh, je vais répéter mon nom, vous l'avez là. Euh, juste un mot en attendant de pouvoir commencer formellement sur la règle du jeu linguistique, en espérant que nous aurons les micros tout à l'heure parce que la salle est bruyante et on ne s'entend pas toujours très bien sans les micros. Ou alors il faut parler fort et projeter sa voix. Donc je vous recommande de le faire. Euh, nous n'avons pas de traduction simultanée. La plupart des gens comprennent probablement et le français et l'anglais sont plus à l'aise pour s'exprimer dans l'une des deux langues. Euh, donc je vous invite à le faire. Et si à un moment il est nécessaire de traduire parce que quelqu'un ne comprend pas soit le français soit l'anglais, je ferai le, le traducteur selon les besoins. Avec ces uh, quelques remarques, uh, can I start with the, with the actual uh, substance? I have, yeah, 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 I have a slide that points on the aims of the workshop. Du coup, quelle est la langue qui fait le plus uh, consensus? Est-ce que tout le monde comprend l'anglais sans forcément pouvoir le parler? C'est bon? Does everyone understand? I was asking if everyone understood English. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Then let me use English, and if uh, anyone needs any uh, French language input, just, uh, just ask. Why are we here? We're here to discuss um, a number of projects connected to what for the UN system as a whole is a very big year. 2015 is the year of two major processes reaching the point of culmination processes that will shape uh, the future of UN action in the area of sustainable development very broadly understood uh, for the next 15, 20 years. For better, for worse. And we're not here to discuss the negotiation process, and I will refrain from making any predictions about whether the outcomes will be for better or for worse. But what is certain is that both the negotiation of the um, post-2015 development framework, which will include uh, something you've certainly already heard of, the Sustainable Development Goals, uh, will be an important moment for the UN system to take stock of what, it, of what it's achieved and failed to achieve since 2000, since the Millennium Declaration, and at the same time to adopt a new vision to move forward, which tries to integrate the um, minimum ethical and moral priorities of the Millennium Development Goals, which were deliberately baseline targets, with something more ambitious and more universal, which would commit all states of the UN system to a certain number of goals stated in general terms, targets stated in more quantified terms, and measured by indicators, which in principle would allow um, the international community as a whole and each individual member state to be accountable for what it achieves. And at more or less the same time, the UN General Assembly will open in the third week of September and uh, will probably have completed most of its substantive work towards the post-2015 um, development framework at that time, though the actual detail will probably be worked out until December. In the same time frame, the international community through the uh, Conference of the Parties to the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change will be meeting to realize the ambition adopted um, three years ago in Durban to conclude in 2015 a new universal legal agreement, the form of which is uh, still in discussion in some respects, which will provide a framework for global action on climate change after the demise of the, in any case, not really implemented Kyoto Protocol. 
with a different architecture, different objectives, different governance mechanisms, different financial flows. So the combination of a new vision for addressing sustainable development in general and a new legal framework for addressing climate change will actually make 2015 a very big year. Now, the negotiation process is owned by the member states of the UN system. But it's not just about the negotiation process. Legal agreements are important. Implementing them once agreed is even more important. But there are many things in both areas, changing the world for the better, which are not within the scope of legal negotiation and not necessarily directly within the scope of action by states either. To put it in very simple terms, which I'm borrowing from one of our headline publications of recent years, the 2013 World Social Science Report, climate change changes everything. That was the slogan. Le changement climatique, ça change tout. Um, and the idea that climate change changes everything, which can be extended to other environmental and societal challenges, is a statement that these issues are not issues in a separate box to be addressed by specific mechanisms and which don't really impact on the achievement of other goals. This is analytically wrong, politically irrelevant, condemned to fail. On the contrary, the challenge that the international community faces is to integrate environmental issues with social issues, to integrate climate change with jobs, health, intergenerational solidarity, energy, obviously, housing, education, including connections that may not immediately be apparent. Similarly, the challenge of the Sustainable Development Goals is to integrate questions of poverty eradication, questions of inequality or, equal, or the promotion of equality, uh, questions of participation and democracy, questions of uh, gender and the rights of children, questions of housing, health, and jobs, in a package that doesn't just, for purely political purposes, bundle together a set of disparate issues, but more profoundly establishes the connections which are systemic and structural between the components of those issues. And to do that is an intellectual challenge, of course. It's a political challenge, but it's also a comprehensive societal challenge. Everyone is probably fed up of being told that at a certain level, it's your responsibility to act. You, and you, and you, must save the planet. Partly because it seems absurd to put at the level of individuals with a very limited capacity yeah. the duty of saving the planet, and partly because, understandably, you would like the politicians to do their job first. But at the same time, many of the things that need to be done cannot actually be done by state-level regulation, adopting laws, imposing penalties and sanctions. Many of the transformations required in order to make society sustainable call on a wide range of highly dispersed individual action, not necessarily coordinated, which in aggregate will over time add up to new patterns. And among those who need to act, Young people have a particular position because they have a commitment to the future that is specific, they have ways of acting that are specific and in some respects quite new, and they have uh, capacities to come together across traditional borders of sectors, of nations, of cultures that uh, can be leveraged to achieve change. So the general political context within which we set our discussions is what I've just sketched. Very broad, very general pour le dire en français en un mot, pour le bénéfice des francophones, euh, construire un monde qui soit véritablement durable, c'est construire un monde qui sera forcément profondément nouveau, avec des nouveaux climats à tous les étages, pour faire un clin d'œil euh, à ceux dont nous discutons dans un autre contexte. Et cela repose évidemment de manière essentielle sur la négociation politique et l'action délibérée des États, Mais ça repose tout autant sur des choses qui échappent à la logique de l'action politique coordonnée et qui relèvent bien davantage de la mobilisation sociétale. Ce n'est pas que chacun ait la responsabilité individuelle 
de prendre la responsabilité de tout, ce serait absurde, mais c'est que chacun à son niveau peut faire des choses et d'une certaine manière la capacité d'agir face à ce type de problème implique la responsabilité d'agir dans la limite de ses capacités et de ses moyens. On ne va pas faire de la philosophie morale, mais cette relation entre capacité et obligation, je vous invite à y réfléchir, elle est intéressante. So more specifically, what we have been discussing with Miro, and I'm very grateful uh, to him for giving us the opportunity uh, to meet here today, and quite a few people will join us at some point when they when they wake up, smell the coffee, and uh, actually get here. Um, a couple of my colleagues from UNESCO had already informed me that they would arrive a little later because of other commitments. That's fine. Others are pending. Um, what we have uh, been discussing over the last few months is what we specifically can do in partnership between UNESCO, an Austrian NGO, and anyone else who would like to join the party, including relevant French institutions in particular, representatives of civil society and youth movements and others, to make a difference in specific areas by using the opportunity of COP21, a major uh, opportunity to achieve visibility, leverage and mobilization, to make a difference in certain key areas. And as Miro will explain, he has in the past, at the time of Rio Plus 20, successfully uh, used music for this purpose organizing a, a song contest for young people that was successful in uh, generating interest, debate, discussion, uh, and action all around the world by using the familiar mechanism of song combined with competition. This is a very familiar mechanism. We will have our colleagues from uh, Eurovision here later, and as you know, it's one of the uh, headline uh, shows uh, the Eurovision Song Contest, which is all about singing, sometimes, and winning, definitely. Um, some of the acts are very strange. We hope we can do a bit better in a purely musical sense, but well, that's part of the point of the Eurovision Song Contest. And um, by using this very simple idea, we hope to create a space where some key things can be achieved. First, um, Networking among young people cross-continentally throughout the whole world who are given the opportunity to come together for a common purpose without uh, needing to share anything other than the desire to take part. So a very open-ended, inclusive, flexible framework for engagement. Secondly, something that leverages new technologies. This wouldn't have been possible 15 years ago. We can now do it. So let's do it. Let's use the capacity that uh, many people in all parts of the world now have to produce professional quality uh, sound and images and leverage that through also mechanisms of um, exchange of information uh, through um, digital media to uh, produce a new space of shared action. Third, to leverage all of this as a way of thinking about the issues. If it was just about making songs, then why have it at COP21? But the challenge of making songs that connect to the global societal challenges that I've just been talking about is one that will produce songs, but will also produce ideas, language, debates, disagreements. And we want to reflect those as well. And thereby, give the young people participating in the contest the opportunity to engage with a broader um, sphere of debate, not limited to songs and not limited to young people, which is about how to face up intellectually and imaginatively to the challenge of a world that needs to be rethought in light of the challenges that it faces. And finally, um, doing this at COP21 in connection with the institutions that are running COP21, including the Secretariat of the Convention, which uh, supports this idea, I'll say more about this later, um, is an opportunity to leverage the biggest uh, international event ever held in Paris for the purpose of generating some energy that can achieve change beyond the very formal and very closed process of negotiating legal agreements. 
COP21 will end on the evening of Friday, the 11th of December, 2015, or more probably around lunchtime on Sunday, once the talks have been stopped and the extended sessions have been uh, implemented. And it will end with what international conferences produce, declarations and agreements uh, submitted to the various national uh, jurisdictions for ratification. And as you may know, the entry into force of the agreement to be adopted in Paris is scheduled for 2020. That's a long time away. We haven't got that long. We need to start acting now. And we definitely need to start acting on the morning of Monday, the 14th of December. So generating the energy to achieve action that doesn't depend on the details of political agreement is not a way of criticizing the political process. It's a way of recognizing both its importance and its limits and affirming the need for global citizens to grasp the challenge themselves. This is the general conference. Why is this of interest to UNESCO? Two main reasons. Well, actually more than two. Two main reasons for the social and human sciences sector. First, um, UNESCO is a major partner of COP21 and has been invited uh, to be such a partner uh, by uh, the French government at a high level. So we have a commitment which has been expressed in, on many occasions publicly by the Director General to contribute strongly to COP21, in particular in the areas of science, including social science and youth, in order to make it more than just a negotiation process. That's the general picture. Within that general picture, UNESCO has some very major competences, which are not within my programs, but which uh, will appear very strongly in public at the time of COP21, including uh, UNESCO's leadership of the UN Agenda on Education for Sustainable Development, and UNESCO's leadership of the UN Agenda on Oceans. I put that to one side because it's not directly uh, the subject of our discussions here. Within the social and human sciences sector of UNESCO, we have two big agendas, both of which need to converge very powerfully um, at Le Bourget in December. And we will use all the steps between now and then to build uh, that synergy. One is what I've just been discussing, our social and human sciences program on social transformations which is about understanding how societies transform or not, creating spaces for political consensus about action to respond to those transformations, and supporting action at the decentralized level to respond. Action by our member states, but equally action by societies themselves. It is not our task as the UN to transform society. It is our task to support societies in transforming themselves. But we also have another uh, big agenda, which will be discussed in more detail by a colleague who will join us after the coffee break, which is that UNESCO has a leadership role within the UN on youth and organizes every two years in the context of its general conference, which is the meeting of all member states to set high-level policy and strategy for the organization, a youth forum which is composed of delegates of young people from the individual member states, usually appointed by the national commissions for UNESCO of each member state, um, and which who come together for three days before the general conference to discuss the issues of the general conference from the perspective of youth delegates and adopt outcomes that are then presented formally to the general conference. For obvious reasons, uh, in 2015, the Youth Forum will focus in particular on climate change. And we would therefore like to make the right kinds of connections between what will be done through uh, the formal diplomatic mechanism of the Youth Forum and what we wish to do in a much more decentralized, distributed, um, and informal way through our activities to facilitate the engagement of young people in social transformation. Je vais peut-être m'arrêter là, je ne vais pas re-résumer tout ce que je viens de dire, euh, juste les deux mots essentiels. Le programme des transformations sociales et le programme de la jeunesse travaillent ensemble pour s'assurer que le secteur des sciences sociales et humaines et les différents programmes et valeurs que ce secteur porte 
soit visible, présent, pertinent au moment de la COP21 afin de favoriser la mobilisation des sociétés et pas seulement des États au service des objectifs que la communauté internationale s'est donné d'une planète et de société planétaire durable. Et à cet effet, nous allons utiliser tout un ensemble de modalités d'action, dont la chanson, sans. Est-ce que quelqu'un a besoin de compléments d'information en français par rapport à des choses que j'aurais dites trop vite en anglais Des questions générales à poser d'ailleurs sur l'UNESCO et sa relation avec le processus international sur le changement climatique. Je vois que les, les stores non seulement font du bruit, mais en plus ne voient pas très bien le soleil. N'hésitez pas, si c'est vraiment nécessaire, à changer de place, si vous le trouvez euh, euh, avec le soleil dans les yeux. Je suis désolé, on ne peut pas faire C'est un vieux bâtiment, il est ce qu'il est.